Hey YouTube fragrance family, welcome to my top 20 fall fragrances designer for the year 2016. Yes, I know it's 2017 today. However, a lot of these can apply to winter right now. Um, so my winter lists are coming. However, a lot of these are gonna be returnees. Um, these are kind of like little mini reviews. So definitely stick around. Um, a lot of new releases in this top 20 list, yes. Uh, I purchased a lot of designer fragrances in 2016 and I really wanted to see a lot of these obviously are cool weather fragrances so this was my first time really uh, wearing these fragrances. So the ones I liked I kind of put in this list because I've been wearing them, testing them out and uh, trying them out. So now let's start off this top 20 with the House of Christian Dior. This is a new release from them. A gorgeous, more of a mature fragrance. I don't know if this one is released in North America. I haven't seen it around my way. Um, very much something that hasn't been talked about too much in our fragrance community. This is Jules by Christian Dior. Um, this is the re-release, repackaged, new, old stuff. <laughs> uh, this was an exciting purchase for me. I pur purchased it in 2016. Um, it was one of the greatest men's fragrances back in the 80s. It was where Dior really kind of got their, their name out in the men's game. So Jules, um, I think fall would be one of the best seasons to wear this scent. It really didn't disappoint me. Uh, great use of florals here with some fur and some leather. Um, it, it, if I want to give you guys a little imagery of this, it's a very green, damp, aromatic, leathery scent. Um, this was perfect when the leaves started falling. 100%. Um, I wore it going out for walks, going to an outdoor market, uh, going to a hockey game. Um, I wore it casually during the fall, during the day or night. Um, excellent longevity and projection with this one and Ziada quality through and through. Um, Jules is one of those fragrances that I really can't wait to review. Um, a re-release, repackaged fragrance from Christian Ziada. I'm happy they brought her back. Now number 19, a staple of my fall designer list. Yep, um, this is from the house of Burberry. It's arguably their best scent for men. London, uh, plain and simple. London's a beast in the fall. Um, it is a staple for fall and winter for me. Uh, what can I say that has not been said with this fragrance? It's considered pretty much a cheapy now. If you go online, you can probably get this for around 30 bucks or less. Um, it's probably the best 30 bucks that you'll ever spend. Um, it really is great. Uh, it's got tobacco, it's got cinnamon, port wine. Um, really a comforting scent. When I think about London, I think comfort. Uh, Longevity is not the great greatest, neither is the projection on this one. However, during Thanksgiving, um, inside the home, raking leaves or sitting on the deck enjoying a drink at night, um, this is a perfect warming, comforting scent. Um, this is pretty much now a classic in the fragrance game, a must have in any collection. One of the best from the house of Burberry, Burberry London at number 19. Now number 18, we're gonna continue this trend uh, actually with the new release uh, from Paco Rabanne from the 1 million house or the 1 million lineup. I really like this one. This is 1 million Privé. Again, a new uh, purchase for me in 2016. This one kind of strays enough from the original 1 million uh, to be purchase worthy in my opinion. Um, it's sweet, duh. Uh, <laughs> it's warming. It's also very comforting. And those are two, um, two words that I'm looking at. Warming and comforting for a fragrance. Um, great use of cinnamon in this one. Uh, and I love the use of the note du jour, which is actually tonka. You're going to see a lot of these fragrances are going to have a little bit of mix of tonka in, in each one. Some compare this to an Ambre Nargile from Hermes, which is a super pricey uh, beast of a fragrance. It's basically the apple pie of the fragrance game. I, I wouldn't really uh, say that this is an Ambre Nargile. It really is not, to be uh, my personal opinion. It, is, it takes a lot of cinnamon, obviously, from Ambre Nargile, and that's pretty much it. Uh, good longevity and projection in this one. The pleasant surprise from the One Million lineup. It, uh, it almost felt like One Million. They were just just playing around with the recipe a little bit and it needed something that was a more of a drastic change. Um, and I think this one's highly wearable as a fragrance. I wore this going outside, uh, going for walks, hanging out for barbecues, on the deck. 
um, just having drinks, things like that. I wore it during the day or even night. Um, really more of a casual based fragrance for me, but I really like the warmth of Privé. I really feel like it was a warmer fragrance. I really like that edge of 1 million. Now number 17, let's go Yves Saint Laurent and La Nuit. Again, another flanker to a bestseller. Um, this is La Nuit de L'Homme, L'Intense. Now L'Intense, what do people talk about this fragrance? Performance issues and not being an intense version of the original. That is pretty much the big gripe about L'Intense. Well, people are in an uproar. Oh, it doesn't smell like the original. It's not an intense version. Why would I buy it? I believe this is an excellent addition to the La Nuit brand. Great use of the note du jour. Guess which what, which note it is. Tonka bean. Yes, a great use of it with DR quality iris. That's very hard to do, but they did it. And a pinch of violets in this one. It's warming, which is what Tonka does. Um, I wore this fragrance easily at work. I dressed it up in a suit. I dressed it down. I think Lintaus is a very versatile fragrance, well constructed. I really don't get the heat with this one. It's actually one of the better releases in the La Nuit lineup. Um, I really do. People need to stay away from, I know they, they're tagging it lin intense and everybody is in an uproar because it's not an intense version, unfortunately, but it is a solid release. You just kind of, you can't have that one mindset that you're thinking that, but I, I know how they market it and that's why people are upset, but I think it's a solid release. At number 17, now at number 16, this one, oh my God, so many years trying to find this fragrance online. And then when I get it, they finally decide to release an intense version, apparently that smells the same. So I'm kind of pissed off, but anyway. This is Lolit, Lolita, well, bleh, Lolita Lempico Masculine Eau de Minuit. Um, so this is a limited edition fragrance. I purchased it in 2016 and I really wanted to see what it did. And in the fall, it works so well. What a great addition to the Eau Masculine lineup. Uh, personally, I think this is an improvement to the original, which is a hard thing to do. This flanker kills that black licorice. Um, really a beautiful black licorice scent. If you're looking for black licorice, this is it. The projection and longevity are both solid in this one. This one was worn in and around Halloween. This was my Halloween scent. I felt the black licorice dark theme truly shine through during that time and it really did not disappoint. I love wearing this around that time. I wore this mostly casually during the night. Best time to wear this was at nighttime um, when it was kind of just a little cool. It's not something I'd wear daily, but a treat to wear from time to time. Some of these fragrances are just those. Um, some are highly versatile and some are just treats that I wear from time to time. And this is one of those that I'm just going to wear when I get that taste. At number 16, Eau Masculine Eau de Minuit. At number 15, again, a new release from the House of Guerlain. This is Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum. Again, one of my new purchases from the House of Guerlain. Um, this is another 2016 flanker that's just killing the game right now. Um, these flankers are really, really <laughs> outstanding from designer games. I gotta say, I'm a designer head through and through. Um, that's where my roots are and I get excited when they release solid flankers. So this one, great. I actually don't own the original uh, Homme Ideal and I don't remember it being actually great. I, I just remember it being sweet. That's all I remember. However, this is great. It's even kind of a little low on this list. I think it could have been much higher. It could have been top 10, um, maybe in the next coming years. Um, I really think that this is one of those fragrances that is going to have that longevity and far, uh, as far as my top 20 list goes, I think it's just, just gonna keep co uh, coming. Um, I love Guerlain. I love that this is Guerlain quality. Um, this is great stuff. The longevity is there in this one. The projection's solid. It's not too heavy. Um, against many other scents in this list. Um, it's one of those that it's a little lighter. The Tonka, did I mention, is the Note Du Jour, and it is very much high-end in this one. It's it's not on Tonka Imperial's level, another Guerlain scent. Um, Tonka Imperial is the best freaking Tonka-based fragrance of all time. However, it's much better than many designers that utilize Tonka. So um, some of these scents in front of me already, I got a couple here in this list that utilize Tonka. That Tonka is not on this list. You kind of get um, on this level. This fragrance kind of gives you that cherry vibe, that almond vibe that I'm thinking about Tonka. When you're getting a full Tonka note, um, it should show up. 
Tonka Imperial gets that. Um, Fave Delicieuse from Christian Dior also utilize this. So those are two fragrances that have that full Tonka note. Some of these fragrances utilize some portions of Tonka. Um, that is a, this one is us, utilizing the full Tonka beam. It's sweet, it's warming, it's comforting. Uh, the, blend. the blend is excellent in this one. And saying that the Tonka bean in this fragrance is unique. It gives it a uniqueness versus other designer scents. It's kind of saying something just because every designer right now is releasing a Tonka bean fragrance. And this is on another level right now. It's not high end as Tonka Imperial and Fave Delicieuse are. While those things are almost $150 and up as far as pricing goes. So I can't really compare it to it. But um, this is, you know, if you're looking for a Tonka bean fragrance, this is going to be the one. Um, it has a fullness to it. Really nice at number 15. Now number 14, the hype train is alive on this one. The community is absolutely loving this stuff. People are talking about it like crazy. From the house of Valentino, this is Valentino's Umo Intense. Now, hey, I don't fall into the hype train. I could easily put this number one and just say some random BS and say, this is my favorite for fall and everybody's gonna be super happy. I don't play that game, guys. Um, This one, I like it. I really, really do like it, but I, <laughs> I, I just think, I just think it's stealing not just a page, the whole freaking book of DHI. That's not unique. I want designer fragrance houses to really shine and give us something different. So Valentino, you've impressed me with what you've released lately. However, do something unique. That really is gonna impress me. So Oman Dents, is it a DHI replacement? Hardly. <laughs> Another 2016 release that I wore quite a bit just to see how it would do in the cool weather. It did well. Um, I The ones that I actually liked are on this list. This one, leather, iris, and tonker are used in here. It's an excellent blend. Yes, the longevity and projection, both solid. You can wear this um, like you would wear DHI. Best worn, dressed well. Suit, tie, tuxedo, whatever. Can be worn during work days. It can be worn during the night just because it has a little bit of playfulness. Dressed up, dressed down, doesn't matter. However, it's not creative. It's a great set, nonetheless, but I don't like the creativity of this. It's not creative at all. Now, Valentino, I challenge you, take this kind of quality in a scent, make a scent that is new. Piggybacking on TR and making a new scent for yourself is what I'm looking for. Let's see what you can do on your own. So I'm hoping the next release, I'm keeping my eye on Valentino. I want to see something unique from them, you know. Stop piggybacking on Zial's success and try something new. That's what I'm challenging Valentino with. But nonetheless, the great set. If DHI was never released and this was released, it would be number one on my list. That's all it is. It's not unique. I, I rather have DHI. And I'll tell you guys why once I get to DHI on this, on this list, because it's on the list. Now, number 13, another new purchase for me from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. Jean-Paul Gaultier has two fragrances in this top 20 list. Mmm. This one in 2015 release, Ultramal. Ultramal, this stuff is bonkers. Um, what a great scent from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now, look past the childish sweetness of this fragrance just for a minute. Um, this thing is well composed and one of the best Le Mal flankers in years. Longevity and projection, forget about it. It is through the roof. <laughs> Pretty much beast mode. Ultra Mall is the right, uh, Ultra Mall is the right word for it. It really is Ultra. Francis K is the nose behind this fragrance, um, and I love that. I respect Jean-Paul Gaultier for bringing the original back, original nose back to the fold, and Francis K killed it with the pair opening. I love the pair in this. The pair works so well with the original composition of Le Mall. It gives it a different edge, but a welcome one. This works so well in the heat. Imagine that. Not high heat, but during a cool summer night, this thing is absolutely bonkers, but also during these cool days for fall. I wore this at night mostly, or just going out to the mall or shopping, movies, things like that. Really a casual wear type of scent. Great release from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Do not, uh, you know, uh, that, that sweet opening will probably kill somebody, but at the same time, it is, uh, after that, it's smooth writing, and I love it. Uh, Ultra Mall, really great one. From Jean-Paul Gaultier at numero tres. Number 12, Dolce Cabana. Dolce Cabana's got two cents from the one program. This is the one EDP. Now, the EDP, upon smelling this one, 
and Royal Knight version, I certainly appreciate the one line from D&G more and more. They're doing great things with this lineup. It's a winning combination. The nose behind this one is Pudge, which is a Hall of Famer nose. Now, a non-Tonka-based scent on this list for once. Um, this one um, utilizes many of the original notes of the original in this one. Um, you're going to get a lot of the original The One. Um, I love The One, so that's a good thing. Um, it has a certain freshness to it with an air of darker sophistication. Um, longevity is great. Projection is pretty much average. I can wear this one dressed up, dressed down. Um, really day or night, more of a nighttime scent, but uh, I can wear it during the day, either or. This is a star among many star flankers in this list, because look at this flanker, 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 flanker. Um, great job by Dolce Gabbana. I, I gotta say, I love the EDP version. Now let's take a look at number 11 from the Muglier house. Finally, Muglier shows up. You knew it was coming. Oh, wow. This one, an oldie, but a goodie. <laughs> when things are good, why change? At 11, Pure Malt was number one on this list a few years back. Still a staple in my fall list. Uniqueness is the name of the game with Pure Malt. It's on par with Angel Men as the best release in the men's game from this house. It continues to be a top wear for me. Longevity and projection are both solid. I wear it casually mostly during day or night. Now that the hype kind of died down on this one for a few years now, it's a good time to snatch a bottle. I think this is one, if not the best, one of the best designer released in the past 10 years. Um, really is, funny enough, probably the best flanker ever released. Um, this is uh, one of those fragrances that I absolutely love at number 11. Um, it really is something that, you know, Pure Tonka was a, a new uh, fragrance for me, but uh, usually I reach out for this and Amen. Uh, when the cool weather starts, just because I kind of miss them, and uh, I just fall in love with them every single fall. So at number 11, Pure Malt. Now let's go into my top 10. It is a crazy top 10. Um, I'm really excited to let you guys know about this. Um, we got a whole bunch of newcomers, but we got a couple, you know, staples that I, I can't get away from. At number 10, from the house of Christian Zior, this is the originator. Can't be duplicated. <laughs> DHI, baby. Um, DHI. So we all know Intense made the list, and I, I said, why get the copycat when the original is so good? There's a reason why this is so high. DHI has been number one on this list before. It never gets ignored. Um, it really is just one of those top 10 cents for me. Um, every single time fall comes, it's a must reach the fullness of the notes. Mostly the iris cannot be replicated. Its quality is there, the fullness of the iris, you don't get it in too many fragrances. Dior did it right. The longevity and projection are through the roof with this one. The blend's amazing. The quality's on another level. Dior could charge 150 bucks for the whole Dior um lineup. I think the whole Dior um lineup is worth that much. I'd pay it, it's worth it. Um, it really is on another level. Um, the best modern men fragrance lineup, hands down, maybe. DHI is best worn when you're looking your best. It, it just screams out high end. Um, really that DH lineup is a stunner from Christian Dior. The best lineup. If you don't own any of those, you gotta get your nose on that lineup. It is bonkers. Now number nine. From the house of Lalique, you guys know Ocre Noir, usually a staple here, either in the fall or winter. Ocre Noir, one of my favorite designers, the probably one of the most unique vetivers in the game. This is its flanker. We're going back to flankers again. Ocre Noir à l'extrême. Now, Ocre Noir à l'extrême, um, new purchase for me last year in 2016. Um, you know, we're going from uber classy DHI to... Dirty Ancre Noir Extreme. Best flanker in the Ancre Noir lineup by far. It is worthy of a buy. Um, if you think this is an extreme version of Ancre Noir in term of power, you're wrong. Ancre Noir is a beast in its own right. Like, it is a beast. That's why I love it so much. But I felt this one kind of cleaned it up a bit, if you can even say that, because it's a dirty set. Uh, however, it's not beastly as far as projection and longevity goes. Um, they're both... Very solid, but don't expect an extreme Ancre Noir. Why would you want that anyway? Um, great use of green notes, woody notes, and just plain daring and exciting scents. 
Aqua Noir and this one are both top notch in uniqueness. Nothing in the designer game touches those fragrances. Um, I'd say more, this one's a more wearable Encre Noir, if I could really say that. Um, I wore this casually. I wore it at work. Um, I don't dare wear Encre Noir. I wore Encre Noir a few times at work and I got this. This is what I got from coworkers. You stink. Vetiver doesn't work very well at work. Um, but this one I can wear and it has a little bit of daringness to it that I love. I just love spraying it on and go, hmm, wonder if I'm going to get anybody saying anything. Um, so Encre Noir à l'extrême, excellent set from La Ligue, a, a welcome addition to the Encre Noir family. Next, another flanker, this is Dolce Cabana, the one, and the next flanker, beautiful. This is Royal Knight, the one Royal Knight, very close to the Eau de Parfum right here. They're close, but this is the better fragrance, in my opinion. It has solid longevity projection you know, compared to the rest of the one lineup. Like, it's not a beast in any way, you know, but it's good. Uh, the uses of spices and woods are what this, give this flanker that kind of Middle Eastern take on the one. There are welcome additions to the original. The sandalwood is truly what makes this fragrance gorgeous. It just gives it a creaminess to the scent. I love it. Highly recommend it. If you like the original and you like the EDP, get this one because it's great. Uh, I wore this all the time, work, daily, during the night, indoors, outdoors. It was versatile, highly versatile fragrance in the fall and why it's so high on this list at number eight, Royal Night, one that you should seek out, really. Right here at number seven, this is the cutoff point, okay? I wore these enough in fall, but from seven on, these were constantly in the rotation. You know, it got hit at least weekly. So let's take a look at it from the house of Versace. Man, Versace, there's nothing. Mm, this one's great. But Versace hasn't released anything that great in the past few years. This one is oh, beautiful bottle, beautiful, beautiful scent. Everything just works. Versace Oud Noir. This is no stranger to the list. Oh, God, I'm not going to have enough space for six more bottles. Okay. No stranger to this list, Versace Eau Noir, being one of my most worn designers in the past few years, it's still holding strong. Forget Eros, forget Dylan Blue, that shit is shit. This is where it's at for the Versace house. It's dark, mysterious, it has a great combination of notes. By far the best Versace for me. If Versace made a scent for me and I had to pick one, this is the one I would want. It's a lighter fragrance compared to the other Oud based fragrances out there. However, it gives this scent wearability, I think. I can wear this during the fall every single day. Signature scent worthy for me? Yeah, yeah, signature scent worthy in the fall. Yes, it doesn't have that much oomph for the winter. I still wear it in the winter, but um, I, I love it. I wear it during work, I wear it during the day, I wear it at night. Great, great work of woods, spices, and an interesting use of leather in this one. I love that one, I love it. Beautiful bottle, beautiful everything. At number seven, Oud Noir by Versace, a great one, go check it out. At number six, hey, this one's been here since ever. I don't think this fragrance has ever left this list. This bottle is, it's been used. <laughs> this is Miguel's Angel Men. Now, this one. Mm. This one has been a staple for me ever since I've been doing YouTube videos. I know most of you may be asking, where's Pure Tonka? Sorry, but with malt going strong here in the original Amen, um, there was no room for Pure Tonka. It's going to have its time, but once it gets cold, I dust off my Mugliese. I go, blue, 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 let's go. It's time to work. And... The first two that I always wear are Malt and Amen. I would describe them as 1A and 1B. 1A, 1B. That's it. And they get first dibs. I miss them so much during the summertime. I really just crave wearing these fragrances. Once I wear these, I just can't stop. And the other Mugliers are just totally getting ignored because I'm going to wear Muglier. I'm going to wear the same one for, you know, the same type of, you know, pure wood. You know, all these fragrances are, are pretty much the same DNA as this stuff, a little mix, a little different mix, and this one, same thing. So uh, I love these two. And uh, I, I'm sorry, but 
Um, A-Man is by far the most unique and most interesting designer release ever. <laughs> I love it. If you have not smelt it, go now. Go smell Amen. Uh, if you hate it, get a sample. Test test more scents. Once you've tested about 25 to 50 fragrances that are designers, and you start getting like a small collection, then kind of go and revisit Amen. Doesn't and work. one day it's just going to go, and then you're going to be like, oh my God, this stuff is amazing. That's a great scent. Amen at number six. Top five, dead or alive. Let's start it off with Hugo Boss. Yeah, I don't say that too often. I usually never say that. <laughs> Boss Bottled, as you guys know, was my signature scent back when I was a youngin'. This is Boss Bottled Oud. Oh. Mm. This stuff, this stuff, I gotta tell you guys. Boss Bottled Oud, probably one of the best oud-based fragrances designer. There's, there's very few solid oud releases in the designer game. Very few. Boss Bottled is, oud is one of the best. Truly surprised me that Boss could do this kind of quality. This release is on par to Boss Bottled. Uh, I may even pass the original Boss Bottle as the best release from the brand. The Green Apple Note is better than this one. It just, it just screams out. I mean, it really is authentic. It really is beautiful. Um, you know, the Green Apple with the addition of the oud, some cinnamon sprinkled in, some sandalwood, truly makes the Green Apple pop. There's something in there that makes it pop. It's authentic, it's beautiful, and it's a great start to a darker Boss bottle. Longevity and projection are both very solid in this one. The blend's outstanding and probably the best dude scent available for under 100 bucks. I'm saying it now. Boss Bottle Dude, I, I want to review it so bad, uh, but uh, what a great scent at number five. Oh, there's some great designer scents coming up right now. Top four is Boggers. <laughs> I'm saying this, uh, it's my own personal taste, but uh, really it excites me. These are amazing scents. Now let's smell this one. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, from Davidoff. <sighs> Leather Blend. Oh, I love this one. Leather Blend. Uh, what a great scent. Uno from Versace was a pleasant surprise and continues to be top designer scent for me. Leather Blend here is on the same playing field. A set I never thought from a brand like Davidoff could really construct. I, I didn't think they had it in. They're in cool water, right? <laughs> they, really? <laughs> they knocked this one out of the park. The longevity and projection are both solid in this one. The one thing that makes me smile with Leather Blend is the smoothness of this set. It really is smooth. Great use of darker notes like leather, amber, but the spices like saffron and pepper give this scent a little bit of bite to it. Um, I, I really think that those are integral parts in Leather Blend. This stuff is so good that I'm blind searching right now. Agar Blend and Amber Blend that's newly released from David Off from the same lineup. Like I don't care what the price is. I don't care where I get it. I know it's Middle Eastern release. I want it now. I want them both. Leather Blend was that good that I'm gonna be blind, but I don't even care. Uh, number four, Leather Blend. Number three, let's take a look at Gucci. Yeah, talking about brands that just come out of left field with some great scents. The Gucci came out real good in 2016 with this one. Gucci Intense Oud. Oh, this. Oh, one of the best releases in 2016. The top, it's top three for sure. Gucci is finally going away from that terrible Gucci guilty. Uh, it makes me guilty talking about them. Uh, they released a gem of a scent right here. Some say Black Afghano Light. Hmm, close. It's got a great smoky incense. It's got some wood and leather, and it's got some ren res resinous amber in this one. This is not a designer release in my mind it's more niche like um, the price tag reflects that uh, longevity and projection are through the roof the best gucci release since tom ford was kind of walking around in gucci david off versace now gucci surprising me with recent releases i hope they continue on this path thank you gucci this is a masterpiece of a set like it should be number one on this list but there's two other fragrances that i like a little better right now but this stuff, don't be surprised if it hits number one on, on any of my list in the coming future. It is 
that good. And I'm talking about really good oud-based fragrances right now in the designer game. Boom, boom, boom. Like, don't tell me there's not quality designer fragrances with oud. Again, it's not on a fullness level, but they are very, very solid. At number three. Now let's go to number two. Let's let's get away from oud a little bit here. This is from Jean-Paul Gaultier. 2000 release again, 2016, doing really good things with the flankers. Le Mal, Essence de Parfum. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so as a Le Mal fanboy, I have to admit, after terrible, after terrible flanker, it seems like Jean-Paul Gaultier is finally getting it. <laughs> They're releasing... Two solid. The last two have been solid. Ultramal and this one. Two solid flankers to their top seller. And I appreciate that as a lover of Le Mans. Now, they can finally release an oud-based Le Mans. I'd be happy. Yeah, I said it. Make the torso black and gold. And call it oud and go for it. <laughs> now, not only is the bottle sexy of this stuff. But the scent itself is gorgeous. The use of the original lavender and the original Le Mans, some leather. The leather in here, kind of suede-like. It's very smooth. Um, and cardamom are excellent. The cardamom in here, think Blend Nuit de Lame cardamom. Um, it really has a warmth to it, comfort to it. It almost has a little bit of sexiness to it, too. Um, it has a warmer feel to it than most Jean-Paul Jean Gaultier, Le Mans flankers, and Le Mans itself. Um, those are usually built for summer. This one is more built for uh, a darker occasion, so more fall and winter. I love that. Um, this one makes me very, very happy. <laughs> now, number one on my list. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> this is great. Everybody's talking about this one, okay? <laughs> you know what they should really be talking about? This one right here. Ferragamo came out of left field with his beast. <laughs> Uma by uh, Salvatore Ferragamo is a beast of a fragrance. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has a sweet spiciness to it. It is the winner of 2016, in my opinion. My favorite of 2016. And it's going to be going after numerous top spots in the next coming years. Always look at scents as a trend. Some are good for the next few years until the user kind of gets bored and they go on to the next hype and people kind of forget about it. Wumo here by Ferragamo is here to stay. It's unique, it's well composed, longevity and projection are both solid. Some compare this to a refined Rocha Man by Maurice Roussel. I will agree, it has that coffee feel to it, Ex more of an espresso. And it's cleaned up and truly well composed as a scent. It has that familiar sweet vibe like all of these recent releases. However, that bubblegummy tone that you get from a lot of these fragrances is not there in this one. It's sweet, but it's a grown-up sweet. Um, I love that. While you're having <laughs> fun with the bubblegummy Code Profumo, let me introduce you to the real winner of 2016, which is this guy right here. Um, at probably not the same cost as Profumo. Profumo is super expensive. So the real winner of 2016, thank you Ferragamo for this release. And now Ferragamo has my undivided attention on your next release. Yes, you do. Uh, you did great stuff right here. It's unique and that's what I love about Guys, it. Guys, thank you for checking out my top 20 list. I love these fragrances. They're mine. I'm keeping them. No, no, they're all mine. Don't, don't try to grab one of these. Um, Excellent scents, and this goes for winter, guys. You can wear a lot of these during the winter time right now. If you got snow on the ground, these are, are perfect. A lot of these are perfect for that. So I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.